man, it has hit us hard. COVID has put everyone in a very difficult situation. I've never experienced anything remotely so um, cataclysmic. Transport tech startups have been affected uh, negatively. I say the biggest thing that is frightening is the uncertainty. There's a huge level of uncertainty. Um, we are seeing how people are responding. Uh, we don't know when we see the next wave. The economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic is still unclear. And that uncertainty is bad for capital markets. The business is, since the lockdown, it's been lower than, uh, I mean, it's been on survival mode. People are fearing health facilities because they think they might actually uh, be at risk of, of getting COVID-19. We are obviously in certain times, but uh, we've brought our company closer and our team closer together and forced us to really focus on what is important. It's very important for you to have your own courage to say yes, I'll make it no matter what. And even when I fall down, I'll raise up and walk and move ahead. Coronavirus has given an opportunity for tech, in, for tech industries to, to be able to, uh, to test uh, most of their uh, uh, products. Uh, tech startups around uh, healthcare and telemedicine, we've seen a lot of activity in that direction. Uh, online shopping, e-commerce and mobile business, there's a lot of uh, activity uh, in that direction. Uh, transport tech startups have been affected uh, negatively. Uh, we've seen home deliveries of food and things like those have also, have also, have also uh, uh, improved. The beauty about a tech uh, technology is that it's easy to prototype and it, it, it is not expensive. They, they, they might have been a reduced revenue, uh, but there is increased activity. COVID affected our um, business um, because the majority of our bicycles um, were located in schools. Um, so we had most of our re revenue coming from schools. Border Border accounts for close to um, a little bit more than 10%, close to 15% of this economy, of this GB GDP. Border Border is the number one, um, is the second biggest employer of young people after agriculture. And that really tells you how important the Border Border is. Our riders were in a, a very uh, difficult situation where they were not able to earn or the earning greatly reduced. Um, and then, uh, of course, as a company with all our employees, not everyone was, was able to, to continue doing what, what they loved the most. As a company, we had, we had our plans um, um, that we, we, we had prepared to be able to, to achieve. Um, and, and all this were actually altered. We, we had to change direction. We had to change the focus. We had to, we had to reach strategies to make sure that even during the lockdown, we continue serving the people of Kampala um, and beyond. We felt okay. Um, our bag literally also has like a sister business, our delivery, where we actually deliver um, parcels and goods using our bicycles. So we basically sort of focused on that arm of the business, um, which was all already running side by side, the bicycle sharing business. Um, but then during um, the COVID and lockdowns, we were able to deliver um, more stuff um, during that period um, as our bicycles weren't working. We are faring on. You wouldn't really attempt to say you're doing well because COVID um, has put everyone in a very difficult situation. As of today, of course, we, um, we've reached out to Jess, as I said, uh, said earlier on, and focus a, a lot on deliveries. In partnership with UNCDF, we're able to bring all the different markets across Kampala on our platform. So originally, our drivers used to earn between 50 to 70,000 shillings a day. Today, our drivers are earning maybe maximum 10, 15,000 shillings a day. 
but of course with the delivery platform that we've been able to bring, um, there's a bit of earning and also we've continued to serve the people of Kampala with this kind of innovation. And also recently we partnered with UNFPA to continue serving people um, who are still in the lockdown, especially um, people who need uh, personal health staff. In Uganda we've had so many that have been able to offer solutions. We have had so many young people coming up with solutions to deliver online. To, to, to do home deliverables. We have our, our you know, the ones, the Jumias that we had and the Safe Border Border now adding on the, the delivery because before Safe Border Border was only on transporting. When this came, they brought in a delivery section. We've had restaurants like Cafe Javas, like right now they have positions, they are deliverable, the delivery, home delivery. It's a key, it's a key now business area. In terms of what the future looks like for um, our startup, I think it looks pretty good. Um, because people are starting to embrace um, the cycling culture. Um, secondly, it's cycling is actually one mode of transportation that is really COVID compliant because you're able to social um, distance properly. But um, we've also been able to um, do have um, strategic partnerships with various um, other startups and to be able to expand and move our bike um, further. We've been able to innovate by bringing like the, uh, the markets, um, bringing markets, bringing shops, um, bringing pharmacies, bringing a number of other different services to the people with the help of our partners. Being this innovative and being this creative and bringing all these other new services does not necessarily mean that we were making money. No, we were not, um, but we're doing all, all it takes to make sure that we continue serving the people. To be honest, what I learned from COVID as a business owner is basically to be flexible, to have foresight um, and to be able to adapt to whatever life throws at you. I mean, pandemics are not um, new, um, but then like strong businesses are businesses that are able to, to pivot or are able to change their service offering, especially during periods like this. I think business will return to normal, I mean, in a few months. Um, to, be, to be realistic, maybe beginning of next year, um, when schools get back um, into um, session, when things are better, when they're able to apply uh, like proper COVID compliance rules to reopening like institutions um, and into allowing people to move freely and properly. I think with the coming of COVID, the future of any tech company is, is much, much brighter if you strategize well. Um, for companies who are not very, very flexible, who are not able to make the necessary adjustment, who are not um, able to continue um, being very, very creative, they will, they will face it rough. But I, I now see that um, most tech companies are going to be, they are being put in a very, um, in a very interesting position where now people are actually interested in technology. People now appreciate the, uh, the, 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 people now appreciate what technology has brought and how technology can make lives better. Coronavirus pandemic um, affects the tech industry in two sides. On the whole, the positive side far outweighs the negative side for the tech industry. Now when it comes to opportunities, it is what you see around you that you can use to either turn it into a business. Now, the challenges of COVID are teaching us actually, the challenges of, of COVID, the fact that people can no longer travel, they can no longer shop what they want. Do you know what it's bringing? It's bringing an opportunity of doing business online. I don't have to go to the market. I can now go online and order my vegetables and they'll come. It means that if I think more of how I can transact online and what I can do online, it is actually give, it's an opportunity that people are now more, more open to doing things, you know. They're now more open on, on doing things online. It provides an opportunity they are much more open to social media. And it means it can use, be used so well on marketing. So let's use our opportunity. A number of people have opportunities. They know so many people, but they are not using those opportunities. They just stop at talking about it. You are looking at behavior patterns. That's what, I mean, pushes things. You are looking at the behavior of users, how they are changing. And currently, as we can all see, the digital world has been magnified a lot. So people 
are found online more. They spend a lot of time online. They want to get things done fast. So if I'm buying something, I don't want to move. I want to stay in my room, place an order, and then receive it in some minutes. So when the number of people or users using digital products increase, that is a big gain for the tech industry because we need those behaviors to be able to create products that will be loved. And so when that happens, it opens up the technological world or the digital world, right? And that is what I think we, in the technological world, we are expecting. It's going to open up, open up. The major hurdle was um, the supply chain and getting inputs, people getting inputs to their farms. Food production was considered an essential service, so it really didn't change much, but we've had to also observe like the protocols. We've had to observe the protocols on the farms um, as well, making sure that um, the farm workers are protected from, from um, the COVID virus. More than ever, having an efficient supply chain is proving a necessity for companies. And Lori has been doubling its efforts uh, to build those solutions um, in this space for the past four years. So we feel like the need for services like Lori has only really increased. Um, so we feel pretty optimistic. The year had started very well. We were growing our revenues and our number of customers until uh, when the lockdown was announced. Uh, we actually had to close our office uh, to cut on costs so that we can keep the business uh, on survival mode. And you know, insurance is a uh, luxury. Uh, we saw a decline in number of people who are buying new policies. Uh, so basically we were maintaining the old customers and some of them had to downgrade uh, just to cut on the cost. Uh, however, it should be the other way because people need to protect themselves uh, against the risks that face them. But that is not uh, that was not the case uh, in our situation. COVID-19 hasn't spared anyone, but all in all, given the circumstances, we feel we've navigated the crisis pretty well. Uh, we were quick to act to reduce the impact and prepare ourselves uh, for the economic impact. Uh, the focus for us this year has been to really ensure we keep the business a going concern. We are currently um, trying to broker some deals to, to like export commodities to Europe and, and other parts of Asia. And I think um, this time next year we should be um, fully operational. What I mean by fully operational is we should be um, exercising the business model as it's been planned out um, um, this time next year. We're also thinking of expanding into so some countries in West Africa. We, uh, we had started pivoting uh, from last year. Uh, I mean, developing some technology to connect insurance companies uh, with other affinity groups like SACOs and uh, and, and fintechs. And interesting is that that particular part of the business has peaked. Right now, we just signed an agreement with a, with a, a big supermarket. We have uh, automated their processes so that their customers can buy also insurance as they shop for other things. The full breadth of the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic is still unclear. And that uncertainty is bad for capital markets. Access to capital has been difficult for businesses and in logistics where cash is king, that is no different. So the longer this economic slowdown goes on, the more some companies will be at risk of uh, insolvency. I think the COVID has really scared off a lot of investors. Um, and so right now, like prioritization of cash, cash is very, very key. Um, a lot of investors are waiting to see how the market performs and similar to um, the users we have on the platform. So I think that's one of the most scariest thing. If this COVID doesn't improve, the spending pat patterns of um, users on the platform could drastically be shifted. But also as a business, what we are trying to do is to 
um, put um, or incentivize spending on, on food production because that's still going to remain a constant um, despite COVID. What I would say is that people need to, to learn uh, to unlearn the old way of doing business and learn the new way because customers have changed, they are more sophisticated and we need to align with our customers. The future for farming in Africa is really bright and hence the future for Complete Farmer is also um, very bright. Currently we want to start building a data warehouse for um, crops in Africa and there's a lot of um, utility that we can get from that um, data that we, we are collecting right now um, and what we want to do is to make farming really look cool to everyone and to be an activity that it shouldn't really be an occupation uh, what we want farming to be is like a lifestyle so just as you go on to your social media um, platforms in the morning you should be able to visit your farm um, just the same way in the morning and contribute to real food production, contribute to um, real food security um, around the world. The silver lining of COVID-19 is that um, it's, it's, it's forced everyone and every company to take a hard look and, uh, and understand what their priorities are and what their focus is. Uh, and for Lori, really, it's, 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 it's convinced us to double down on our mission uh, and build the products to allow us to deliver on that mission. We have used this time uh, during the pandemic and post slowdown to build a better and more effective operation and uh, more advanced and resilient products, which we believe will put us in a better position to compete. Uh, we, expect, we expect to be a lean, mean logistics machine uh, this time like next year. Health, wellness, sport, beauty, medical breakthroughs. Healthy Living cares about your well-being. Every week, connect with our experts. You can ask them your questions and get their advice. Join me, Linor Moudou, in Washington on Healthy Living, your new health program right here on Voice of America. Being part of Our Voices is about more than just sitting here and talking about women's issues. It's about listening to them and bringing their opinions to the table and making sure their voices are heard. Because our lived experiences, our stories, and our voices will help shape the next generation. Remember the name of the file is loop.php. For us, it's been it's been nearly business as usual. It's just some um, strategies had to change, like we had to go more online than offline, and so um, our classes are online, uh, and then we had to create additional classes beyond um, uh, training for developers. Now we also have training for business people, so they can. Um, work on Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint collaboratively um, on the cloud using their phones. Um, I had to perform a lot of cuts. It's, I noticed that um, my company has a lot of very, very loyal staff. We had to bear the impact of the explosion and, the, and COVID-19 by lowering the salaries drastically but they're still here because they know where the company is going in the next month and the month after that and the month after that. The need for the mobile phone to play a key role in work becomes very very obvious when a lot of people are home without a laptop. So that's why we have a lot of people um, making requests about um, how to work from home for their staff and then uh, parents are more open to the discussion of um, can my kid code on their mobile phone now than before. Thankfully, COVID-19 did not stop the ex shipping and the exportation, so we were able to export some of the electronic waste that we could not treat to our um, partnered um, 
uh, refinery. The Lagos State um, government, who, they were very, very supportive. And um, I was let, letting them know that we cannot stop operations because there is a, a, a lot of electronic waste to clear up for our people, for our, uh, for our companies, for our business to, to, to protect our businesses. We have to collect the electronic waste and deal with the confidential material inside. Things can change abruptly. But if you have a plan A, make sure you have a plan B, C, D, E, F. Because you can't predict what's, what, what's going to go on, whether it's um, um, the environment, whether it's policies, whether it's um, um, competition in the workplace, whether it's a pandemic, you really cannot predict. So the best thing to do is to be ready for several eventualities and then um, be open enough, especially as a startup, be flexible enough to change strategy midway to continue the journey you are undertaking. This is an industry that needs to operate right now. It cannot stop operating because we are dealing with a crisis that is older than the coronavirus. I mean, we could get our health, we could get our financials negatively impacted on top of the negative impact of coronavirus. Coronavirus has got us closer to understanding and sensitivity of our health and our family's health. I think there will be a lot of new startups that will be looking at digital health and um, how we can provide health services um, virtually to people and um, how we can solve most of our health, health issues by not, um, by not physically going to the hospital. If you cannot fly to Europe or Israel or India or the US or South Africa for medical treatment, you will begin to look again at your local medical health facilities. You have to health, whether it's, uh, whether it's hospitals, whether you are going to improve your private hospitals or improve your public health, health systems. The advantage of the digitalization of med, of, of medicine, med, medical, medical wallet, maybe, maybe diagnosis, maybe this, they are here to stay. They are absolutely here to stay. And, and I think tech will revolutionize medicine in ways that we never expected. We anticipated um, what was going to come. Uh, we did plan for it. I mean, the lockdown was the lockdown. I mean, everyone just went shut. I mean, we, we came um, way even less than half of the revenues that we were making before pre-lockdown. So during the lockdown period, it was brutal. In the wake of COVID-19, of course, uh, things have been, uh, we've adjusted as a company. Uh, we used to move to office. Now we are entirely working from home. We definitely had to cancel out all the medical camps we had, we had uh, you know, set in place. We looked ahead, we, we, we thought ahead. We also had the Red Safe, uh, which was for tracking um, uh, symptoms and sort of giving people an idea of what they need to do. But then we also used that opportunity to, to think ahead. Well, what if this lockdown stayed longer? How would Red Bed come out of this? And we really used the lockdown to sort of nail some of the things that we are now even using post-lockdown. In terms of reaching out to the mothers, of course, it remains a very, very big challenge. Uh, but as a company, we keep innovating now and again. So we are developing a home-based ultrasound service. So with this service, we shall be able to reach out to mothers in their homes and in their places of comfort. So that at the end of the day, we are still able to deliver the much-needed ultrasound services. Post, post the lockdown, we've seen um, uptake um, use of our services because of the convenience that it provides people. Um, in, in the current circumstances that we are in, um, it's hard to be definitive, but we see ourselves more um, growing um, deeper into like the relationships that we have. So we have relationships with our pharmacies, we have relationships with our hospitals, we have relationships with patients. We see Redbird being starting to become the go-to point for convenient healthcare um, for anyone in this country uh, because uh, Redbed was built on the principle that you only want people to go into the hospital for things that can only be done in the hospital. Uh, the future for AIMSCAN is one where we might go uh, in telemedicine. We are looking at ourselves uh, service mothers in their places of comfort like homes and anywhere else they would want the scans to be done. So these are the new normals that you know, we are trying to shape and, and this is how we are seeing ourselves transition from the current status quo to 
the post-COVID era where we are going to see a lot of business model adjust. We are going to see ourselves do so much of the telemedicine. We're also going to see ourselves equip frontline health workers with, with the skills to do ultrasound services. We've been able to uh, weather the storm. Uh, we are seeing the strongest performance um, that we have coming out of the COVID um, era. It's been, it's been challenging. I think uh, we've, as a business, you know, my advice is look at it, um, don't rest on your house, um, look at what you can do, it's a challenge, uh, but you can rise up to it, um, adapt, um, innovate, um, see ways in which you can come out of that and continue pushing that. I mean, it's, it's hard, uh, you have to deal with different kind of um, issues, um, employee issues, um, now they have to be working at home, you need to be checking in on them. You can never be prepared uh, so much for crisis. I think uh, the most important thing is to have the right attitude, uh, to know that when crises come, is uh, they come to stretch us to the limits. They come to to make us think of better ways of dealing with our problem. Uh, definitely, the future looks very blurry for anyone out there who has uh, the vision to actually change the narrative. But as young innovators, we're not looking at how frightening the future is. We are looking at how best can we be able to address the challenges that are presenting with COVID-19? For innovators, this is your time. Use COVID to innovate. Come up with solutions. If you have a very good solution, I am sure you will always find a funder. Importantly, keep your integrity. Once you have integrity and you have a good innovation, the sky is the limit. areas should I be, be going into? What sectors are COVID proof? A lot has changed and it will not go back. How are we going to work in the future? Do we really still need offices? You see, when, when there is crisis, crisis takes you to a level whereby if you survive, then uh, then you can only thrive. Yeah, we signed um, certain strategic deals which I can't um, reveal now, but then we would hear more about like in the coming months. And with the new innovation that we have brought, I think the future will be very, very bright. We're cautiously optimistic. 